Hi, Carl. Thank you for joining me in the interview. Um, I know you are a very senior fund formation lawyer. Can you tell us a little bit about what kinds of hedge funds are launching in 2019? Yeah, I mean, there's always the case of very big fund managers being able to launch their funds. Mm -hmm. But what we've seen in 2019 is a trend towards smaller managers being able to get a little bit of traction. I don't want to overstate this because it's still very difficult to launch a fund in 2019, especially yeah. in New York. You really have to have ideas that stand out. But uh, for small managers with ideas that stand out, they are getting traction. They are finding allocators that are interested in their story. Uh, the other thing we're seeing is still a continuation of the trend towards credit funds. Uh, even though it seems like we're very late in the credit cycle, we've been saying that for a few years. And uh, but the credit fund boom is continuing unabated. Be very curious to see though what happens once the economy turns. Yeah. So are those geopolitical events were affecting those hedge funds? Geopolitical <laughs> events are definitely affecting hedge funds. You know, it used to be that uh, we would think of hedge funds as almost purely business entities, but with things like the trade war between the United States and China, uh, it, it's definitely having an impact. I'm getting calls from Chinese managers about whether a company that they invest in, uh, Chinese equity, uh, might be affected by sanctions. I'm getting calls from U.S. managers about how to get their money out of China if uh, things are uh, things get uh, e even worse between the countries. So geopolitical uh, events are definitely having an effect. Mm -hmm. So any issues those hedge funds need to watch out in 2020? Well, we're heading into an election year, and that means that every single hedge fund with a uh, manager that has uh, a registration with the SEC needs to worry about pay to play. Now, these are the rules we only think about every couple of years, uh, but they always matter. And if you are accepting allocations from state uh, pensions or uh, state university endowments or anything like that, you need to be sure that you are not... Uh, Taking, uh, giving any money to political candidates uh, who might uh, control those endowments in those states. So that's something you just need to look out for, especially in a year when people are thinking about politics and maybe investing their own money. This affects all of your employees, so it, uh, you really need that top, top to bottom compliance. The other thing to watch out for is market illiquidity. We saw this in the financial crisis. It's going to happen again. and. Uh, you know, you're going to need to go back to your organizational documents and look what they say uh, and, and uh, how you're going to deal with an illiquidity event. When you have also um, you know, other kind of difficult markets like China, uh, where there are also company-imposed liquidity constraints, you have to take those into consideration too and put it all in a package and come up with a strategy to uh, deal with the next market crisis. Yeah, thank you for sharing the insight. Thank you very much, Carl. All right. thank, thank you. you.